Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a review and blood glucose testing on a whole bunch of Sola Bread products. Now, before I get started, just a couple of quick little housekeeping things. First off, this is a long video. I have, however, put in timestamps, so don't feel obligated to watch the whole thing all at once if you don't want to. I mean, if you do want to, go ahead. But if you can't sit still for that long, the timestamps are there. You can always come back and pick up where you left off. Also, there are a couple of little segments in this video in the first third or so where I did not have my camera autofocus turned on. I apologize if this is distracting. Lastly, in terms of the glucose monitoring, I am wearing a Dexcom G6 continuous glucose monitor, and I'm using for the analysis software the Levels Health app. If you're curious about this, I will put the program details or a link to them down in the description below. In terms of the actual mechanics of testing to make sure that I'm consistent, every test was done in a fasted state with a stable blood glucose in the mid-90s or lower. I did not do any exercise prior to or during the two-hour testing period for each of the glucose tests. So now that we got that out of the way, let's start tasting and testing. I'm going to start with the Sola Sweet and Buttery Bread. Let's take a look at the nutritional information and ingredients. The serving size is one slice, 40 calories, 1.5 grams of total fat, 9 grams of total carbohydrates, minus 7 grams of dietary fiber, and 1 gram of sugar alcohol for a net 1 gram of carbs, 4 grams of protein. The ingredients list is just way too long for me to read. We'll be here all day. So you can just hit pause. I've got it right over there. You can take a peek for yourself. While I wait for the slice in the toaster, we'll try out the untoasted bread. Ooh, this has got a really nice tear to it. It's got a really good chew to it as well. This is probably the breadiest keto bread I've ever tried. The taste is really good on this. I think this could easily be confused for regular bread. The second piece, toasted and buttered, and structurally, this bread held up very well to the butter. Very often when I do keto breads and I toast them and put butter on it, they start to break down a little bit. This, it's behaving like real toast. That is what I remember real toast to taste like. I'm, I, I'm really almost feeling conflicted right now because I feel like I'm eating something I shouldn't be eating. But I'm going to finish this right now along with the untoasted bread, and I will be back in two hours once the level software has had time to do its analysis. All right, let's take a look at how the sweet and buttery bread behaved over the course of two hours. Hmm. So levels scored it a 5 out of 10. There was a 25-point rise in glucose. Now, typically, we consider a spike to be over 30, but this is definitely getting into that neighborhood. I have to admit, though, I'm not incredibly surprised because it tasted a lot like real bread. For the next test, we're going to do the Sola Golden Wheat. Now, just a quick observation. I notice that this is double bagged. You've got the outside bag, and then there's a, another inside bag that's sealed on this. I don't know if that makes any difference. Just something I noticed. In terms of macronutrients, 40 calories per slice, 2 grams of total fat, 9 grams of total carbohydrates, 7 grams of dietary fiber, 1 gram of sugar alcohol for a net 1 gram of carbohydrates, 4 grams of protein, and a very long ingredient list that I'm not going to read. I'll pop one slice in the toaster while I try out the other one as bread. Now one thing I notice immediately is that this feels a little bit heavier than that first bread, uh, a little more dense. The tear on this is really, really nice. Really very, very gluteny and bread-like. The taste is pretty fantastic, and the one thing I notice, so texture-wise, it is just ever so slightly. I mean, 
barely noticeably spongier than that first bread. Then I have my buttered toast. Also very good, but I don't think that this bread benefited as much as the first one did from toasting and buttering. I think perhaps because it already tasted so good just as bread. And, like that first bread, I think if you gave this toasted and buttered to a non-keto person, they would be hard-pressed to distinguish it from regular bread. So now I'm going to finish this, and then we'll see how my blood glucose responds over the course of two hours. Better, worse, or the same than the first bread. It's been almost two and a half hours, so let's see how the Sola Golden Wheat Bread performed. Ah, uh, that is kind of disappointing, but not entirely unexpected. I mean, it tastes like bread, it has the texture of bread, and we got a glucose spike, kind of like bread. 30 points. Now, one of the things that the level software does, and I'll probably show it a couple times in this video, is allows you to compare two different foods. So we're going to compare the Sola Golden Wheat that I just had, and the Sola Sweet and Buttery. And there we go. You can see the blue line is the Sola Golden Wheat bread. The white line is the Sweet and Buttery. Now, they both scored a 5, according to the level software. And I, I think the reason for that, even though the spike was 8 to 10 points higher on the Sola Golden Wheat, is that it seems like there was a more rapid recovery. The Sola Sweet and Buttery, it went up and it was a little bit more sustained in terms of the glucose increase. But uh, regardless, kind of disappointing. Next up, I have Sola's Everything Bagels, and these are hefty. I mean, these are full-size bagels. They're not like the, uh, what was it? Extraordinary Bites that I had done recently, which were quite a bit smaller. I'll show you these in a second, but first, let's go through the nutritional information. Now, bear in mind, as I read these off, these are some big bagels. So, calories, 150, total fat, 6 grams, total carbohydrates, 33 grams. So if you are counting total carbs, I think that pretty much immediately takes these off the menu for you. However, there is 24 grams of dietary fiber and 2 grams of sugar alcohol for a net 7 grams of carbs. There is also 16 grams of protein, and once again, a pretty significant ingredient list. Now here are the bagels themselves. They are not pre-sliced, so I'm going to have to take care of that. But as you can see, this is a decent-sized bagel. I mean, it is at the very least, the size of a regular store bagel. The texture inside, after I sliced it here, looks a lot more like bread than it does like a bagel. So to be consistent with how I tested the Extraordinary Bites bagel, I will be eating this the same way I would eat a bagel in real life. I'm going to toast this, and I'm going to put some cream cheese on it. The bagel has been toasted. I have cream cheesed one side of it. I'm going to take a bite of the uncream cheese first, just to see what it's like texture-wise, flavor-wise, without any additional factors like cream cheese. The tear on it is not like a bagel. It's pretty much like bread or a bun. Flavor-wise, it's great. But then again, if you screw up everything bagel, you should probably lose your license. In terms of the texture, it's a little bit chewier than a bun or bread, but not quite as dense and chewy as a traditional bagel. And now a chunk with the cream cheese. Wow. The moment you put cream cheese on this, this is indistinguishable, pretty much, from a regular bagel. They, uh, they nailed it on this. Now the question is, how is this going to impact my blood glucose? Is it going to be similar to what happened with the bread? We'll know in two hours. All right, let's see how the level software scored the Sola Everything bagel. It called it a gentle rise of 26 points. That's only part of the story, though, because I don't know if you can see on this, 
I ate that bagel at 9, 10 a.m. My glucose was at 78 at the time. Here we are now, four hours later, and my glucose is still elevated. It has not returned to baseline. In fact, I'm still over 100 for my glucose. So, not real happy about that. Let's compare, though, the Sola bagel versus the one from Extraordinary Bites. So, the blue line is the Sola Everything Bagel. The white line is the Extraordinary Bites Bagel. And you can see Extraordinary Bites performed way better. Now, granted, it is a smaller size bagel, but, yeah, it's pretty obvious the difference between the two. Now, what is interesting is both of them took a little dip there towards the about hour and a half range and then came back up. I'm wondering if perhaps the cream cheese had anything to do with that. I'm not sure. It's just, it does strike me as kind of interesting that there's a similar shape to each of the graphs, though the one from Sola does go up quite a bit higher. Next up, we have the golden wheat hamburger buns. In terms of nutritional facts, serving size 1 bun, calories 110, total fat 5 grams, total carbohydrates, also kind of high for those of you counting total carbs, at 24. There is, however, 18 grams of dietary fiber, 2 grams of sugar alcohol for a net 4 grams, and 12 grams of protein. For the purposes of this test, I will be consuming this in a real-world situation, meaning I'm going to make a bacon cheeseburger. The burger patty, uncooked, is a little over a quarter pound. I think about 125 grams. I'm going to put a slice of deli cheddar and two slices of bacon on it, as well as some brown mustard and some mayo. So I'm not introducing any additional carbs into this equation. All right, time to have some bacon cheeseburger. Okay, I can't really opine on the taste of the bun a lot because all I'm getting is bacon cheeseburger. But what I can say is that this is a very juicy burger. But the bun is holding up very nicely to the burger juice. It's not getting soggy. It's not falling apart. I see that happen in a lot of keto buns. Not happening on this. So that's a good thing. But I'm going to finish this burger, and we'll see how it impacts my blood glucose. All right, before we take a look at my blood glucose, I just want to apologize for my camera being out of focus the previous couple of segments. While I was waiting for this burger bun to metabolize, I did a little video editing, and I saw that the video was out of focus. Turns out I had accidentally switched my camera off of autofocus, so normally it focuses on my face, but it was focusing about two feet behind me. Anyhow, now that we got that past us, let's take a look at how that burger bun performed in terms of blood glucose. Not very good, but also very similar to how everything has performed so far in this review. A 30-point spike in glucose. Now, what bothers me most about this one is we had a significant, or I, had a significant amount of fat in that experiment. And what I have found historically is that fat blunts a glucose response. So, given that I had a quarter pound of beef, had a slice of cheese, I had two slices of bacon, I had mayonnaise on this burger bun. I can only imagine what kind of spike I would have gotten had I not been blunting it with all of that fat. But this, this whole video <laughs> is starting to kind of bum me out. I have still left a plain bagel, which I don't think I'm going to test anymore because I, I can't imagine it being any different than the everything bagel. And I've got a hot dog bun, which I'm going to do next. Well, not immediately next. I'll do it tomorrow, probably. Next up are the Sola Golden Wheat Hot Dog Buns. In terms of nutritional information, serving size is one bun, 110 calories, 5 grams of total fat, 24 grams of total carbohydrates, of which 18 is dietary fiber, 2 grams is alcohol sugar for a net 4 grams, and 12 grams of protein. I will be consuming this bun with an all-beef hot dog and some yellow mustard, so I'm not introducing any additional carbs into the equation. 
Here we go. The texture of the bun is just, it's a little bit off to me. It's not like a any sort of traditional bun. I mean, the outside almost reminds me a little bit of the texture of a bagel. Taste-wise, nothing really remarkable, either good or bad. I mean, a hot dog bun really is a delivery mechanism, in my opinion. And if it holds up to a lot of ingredients, and I think this will, just to, you know, based on the sort of the, the firmness of the bun, then it's done its job. But I'm going to finish this hot dog, and I'll be back in around two hours to see what the impact was on my blood glucose. All right, we're back. Let's see how the hot dog buns performed. Levels scored at a 6, or a gentle rise, with a 23-point increase in glucose, which isn't horrible, but it's also not great. That's kind of been the story so far on all of these solar products. Now, I feel I've got two more tests to do, just because I'm going to get questions on it. One will be, can I replicate the resistant starch experiment with this bread? Meaning, you freeze the bread, then you toast the bread, and see if there's any difference in the glucose response. The other thing that I want to do is, I notice that the packaging on this bread is different from the grocery store packaging for Sola bread, at least the loaves that I bought. And I also noticed, going back into the level software, that the Sola bread that I tested previously in a video performed a lot better than this bread. So I think I need to test the internet Sola bread that I got versus the grocery store Sola bread that I got, see what differences, if any, there are in glucose, and figure out can I attribute it to a specific ingredient if the ingredient lists are different. So two more experiments to go. Now I'm going to do the frozen bread test on the Sola Sweet and Buttery. I'd done a video some time ago about whether or not freezing bread and then toasting it creates a resistant starch, and I'll link to that up here. So this bread has been in the freezer for several days. It is nice and solid. I'm going to pop this into the toaster, and then to be fairly consistent with the other reviews, I'm going to have one piece with butter, one piece without. So I'm not adding any more fat that might blunt the glucose response into this equation than I did with the other breads. Okay, here are the two slices of toast. One buttered, one not. I had some people in previous videos complain about my toaster, saying it doesn't toast enough, but I think these are pretty adequately toasted. Now, I'm not going to do any sort of a taste or texture review, because I've already done that earlier in this video. I'm just going to eat these, and I'll be back in two hours to see how it compares with the first instance of eating this bread. Okay, it's been two hours. Let's see how the supposedly resistant starch bread behaved. You know, I see it, but I don't believe it. This seems to be the case every time I try this experiment with resistant bread. I just, I can't wrap my head around the fact that freezing and then toasting the bread results in this sort of decrease in glucose spike. Here, let me just, um, let me show the bread the first time I tested it. So this was one slice of bread, one piece of toast, and I didn't freeze it. 25 point spike. Frozen, straight into the toaster. 14 point spike. I'm I'm kind of speechless. I tell you what, let's use the level software and compare the two together against one another. So here, first of all, is in absolute terms. So the blue line, I hope it appears blue on your screen. The blue line is the toasted resistant bread. The white line is the sweet and buttery. And it's kind of difficult to see, just based on the, the scale of this graph. Let's do it in absolute terms. So this shows where it started. They don't start both at a zero. And you can see the white line. That was the original bread. That was not the resistant bread. And even though it started a few points higher than the resistant bread, it went up higher. It stayed consistently higher for a longer period of time. So I'm not sure what to tell you. If it were just a one-off thing, I'd done it once, I would probably want to test again. 
but I have done this experiment multiple times now with different types of bread where I've frozen and toasted and seen this reduction in glucose spike. So I don't have the background or intelligence to tell you why this is happening, but it happens. And I knew that I would get questions about it, so that's why I did the test. Lastly, let's see the difference between the internet solo bread and the supermarket solo bread. You'll notice the packages are different. I was hoping to find golden wheat so I could do golden wheat to golden wheat, but they were out. They just had the sweet oat. I did, however, test the golden wheat about a year ago in another video. And here's the glucose response from the golden wheat that I did about a year ago. It was a score of eight, a stable response, 15 point rise in glucose. Then here is the sweet oat bread that I was just waving around a moment ago. And I ate that bread the same way I've done in all these tests. So one slice, just untoasted bread, one slice toasted with butter. And you can see the score on that was a nine. In fact, the score was so stable on this, it doesn't actually even say what it was. But as I scroll through, I can see it looks to have moved 10 or 11 points is all. So this got me wondering, why is there such a big difference between the supermarket sola bread and the stuff I got off the internet? And I went through and put all of the ingredients into a spreadsheet, because I'm kind of geeky that way, and started taking a look at what the differences were between the two. One of the first things that stood out to me between the supermarket bread and the sola bread is the placement on the ingredients list of wheat flour. On the supermarket bread, it was third from the bottom. On the internet bread, it was a fair bit higher, seventh from the bottom. But not only does it list wheat flour as an ingredient seventh from the bottom, quite a bit higher, I would say in the first third or so, the internet bread has a cultured wheat flour blend, which has wheat flour, cultured wheat flour. So we've got more wheat flour in the internet bread. But what we've also got is a ton more fiber, a lot of different types of fiber. So the resistant wheat starch, that gets measured as a fiber. Then we have oat fiber, citrus fiber, flax seed fiber, and a vegetable fiber blend, which includes pea fiber, potato fiber, potato dextrin, psyllium husk fiber, bamboo fiber, and flax seed fiber. I think that's nine. Nine different fibers. And... I got to believe that one of those is probably the cause, one or more of those, is probably the cause for that glucose spike that I experienced. Now, something I love about Sola as a company is they are very responsive to their customers. There was a, a time when their bread contained soybean oil, and a number of customers, me included, made a bit of a stink about that, and they got rid of the soybean oil. So it's my hope that they'll also take a look at some of this fiber stuff and maybe determine is one of these things causing a glucose spike? I mean, I'm sure they can get a couple of continuous glucose monitors for some of their staff to try this out. And before I give my final thoughts on this bread, a couple of other data points to share. I tested this bread, I think, over a period of 9 or 10 days. And during that time period, I was very strict about my macros, with the exception of this bread. So there was no other shenanigans going on over the course of the day. It was just this bread and my normal way of eating keto. And I still put on about three to four pounds over the course of this nine or 10 days. My ketones fluctuated a little bit, kind of between 0.6 up to 1.0, which is generally the area that I'm in typically. So nothing big in terms of surprises there. Also, I didn't get any sort of pronounced feelings of inflammation. Nothing in my knuckles or knees or back or anything like that. So, so that's a good thing. And that leads me to my verdict on this bread, which is sort of mixed. I think if you are doing strict keto, this is out. If you are counting total carbs, this is out. If you have a sensitivity to wheat products or gluten, this is out. If you are in the weight loss phase of keto, this is probably out. If, however, you're doing flexible keto, you are in your maintenance phase, and you want a little bit of a treat, but not an everyday treat, this is some really, really good tasting bread. So good, in fact, that if you have non-keto people in your family, they'll probably eat this bread. So I guess my advice is, if you're dying for some really good bread, you're flexible with your keto, you're in weight 
loss maintenance phase, maybe you give this a try. Do your own glucose testing. If it spikes your glucose, if it knocks you out of keto, you can always give it to your non-keto family members. I would also say that if Sola keeps these two separate formulations for their breads, the internet bread and the supermarket bread, I would stick with the supermarket version. But that's it for this very long video. I'm glad you stuck with me. If you enjoyed it, please click that like button. If you're not a subscriber already, tap that subscribe button, then hit the bell to turn on all notifications. And if it really, really helped you out and maybe saved you some money, click that super thanks button. Buy me a cup of coffee. And thanks for watching.